Welcome back. Today on Real Reviews, we are going to be doing a full computer upgrade build. And you can see what we have going on right here now. This is actually an older build. It's an i7 6700K CPU. We have a Maximus 8 Hero Alpha motherboard. We're running a Corsair 8860 Platinum power supply. We have an EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 Super. And we have Corsair Vengeance Pro 32 gigabytes of RGB RAM that we're running right now. Going to be swapping all of that out for all of this. So first of all, the motherboard is going to be a Gigabyte Aorus Z790 Elite AX motherboard, and then we have an Intel i9-13900K processor. We have a non-bending plate from Thermalrite, some MX6 processor paste, and we have some spreaders for the paste. We're going to be doing a Aorus Water Force X280 cooler. We have a Corsair H1000i power supply platinum series we have some corsair vengeance rgb ram this is ddr5 64 gigabytes and then we're going to be running a geforce 4070 gaming overclocked uh, gpu but anyhow guys that's what we have for you we're going to be taking this apart in just a moment we're going to be installing all of these components this is an Aorus z790 elite ax motherboard so let's go ahead and get into it, see what we have in this box. So first off, we just have the motherboard. We have a SATA cable. We have the Wi-Fi antenna, power connector, adapter cable for all the connectors. That's everything that comes in the box for this motherboard. I'm going to go ahead and take it out of the package and show you what it looks like. Now, one thing about this board, which is different than a lot of the other boards that I got, is, um, for example, this is all we got. There's no manual. There's no screws. There's, no, there's nothing. This is all it comes with. So it's just... It's just this stuff. Now, normally motherboards would come with a little more than that, but I don't know, I guess that's how it is nowadays. Okay, so here we are, this is what the board looks like. Very nice, you can come over and take a look at it. Very pretty board. Here's the back plate, all the ports we got. Got some HDMI's, we have USB-C on here. We have um, digital, we have the Wi-Fi connections right here. We got our LAN, a bunch of USB ports. And right here, it only has a mic and a line out. It doesn't actually have any audio jacks on the back. So that's another thing about this board. There are no audio jacks on the back. So just be aware if you do decide to get this board, you're not going to be getting audio jacks. This is what the board looks like. Got our CPU slot and pretty much everything else. Got our SATA ports. Six SATA ports. Okay, well, this is everything that comes in the box. You have your motherboard. You have your Wi-Fi antenna. It comes with one SATA cable. And then one power adapter so you can plug all of your cables nice and neatly into the motherboard. And then one little tiny, not really a manual. It doesn't come with a book at all. You're going to have to download it from online as a PDF format. New i9-13900K from Intel. This is one of Intel's best processors, if not the best one that they have right now. Yeah, there are some things about this processor. Supposedly it gets really warm. Once we're done, we're actually going to be going through the BIOS and setting up the settings to hopefully keep this processor cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have here. I guess there's really no neat way to do this. You kind of just got to cut it. And I've never opened up one of these newer CPUs yet. So let's try not to make it fall all over the place here. There's like a clamshell inside of here. Kind of just like holding up in this clamshell looking thing. See how does this go? I guess it goes like this because Intel is on the top and there it is right inside. There's the CPU i9 13900k very nice so the back of it looks like and then the front of it right there very nice looking cpu okay so what we have inside of the box here we actually have the cpu this little clamshell and we also have some type of instruction manual intel core 9 unlocked and let's see what this is this is probably just some oh there's installation instructions so that's pretty much what's inside of the box right there just a little clamshell that you see right here it's a little chrome clamshell CPU and a little instruction manual. LG, this is the Thermal Right LGA 1700 non bending contact plate for the CPU. I'm going to open it up and see what we have in here. And the reason that you want to get this is because the actual connector where you're going to put your CPU on the motherboard, it actually only holds it down on two spots on the side of the CPU. So, what this does is this has a uniform pressure all the way across. The CPU so it doesn't bend under heat. So you just take this and you put this down over your CPU like this. It's pretty cool. It has like uh, these nice uh, machined edges, nice and shiny. 
You just basically put this down on top of your CPU like that, and you screw it in, just alternating around. And it comes with thermal paste and also come with a little, the little screwdriver that you have right here to screw it in with. That's everything that comes in the box, plus a little installation manual, which doesn't really tell you much. The Oris from Gigabyte is the X280 Water Force Cooler. This is going to be cooling a new 13900K CPU that we're going to be installing in this computer right here as part of a full rebuild. Let's go ahead and open this up and take a look what's inside of the box. Let's see what we got here. First things first, we have an installation sheet. Shows you how to install it for the different applications. We're going to have an LGA 1700. That's what we're going to be using it for. Looks like these are the fans that come along with it. The Oris ARGB fans. All right, I'm not actually going to be using these fans because I'm going to be using some Cooler Master MF140 halos that are already in the case. But this is what these look like right here. They're pretty nice looking fans. These are 140 millimeter fans. They do have uh, ARGB lighting on them. You can see they have the cable and they have the splitter. You got two of these fans right here. Instruction manual comes with some thermal paste. We have all the installation hardware, depending on your application. And then we also have the water block right here, radiator, and the actual cooler for the CPU. This is really nice. I like this cooler a lot. I have this on another computer. So here is the block right here, and here is the piece that goes right on top of your CPU right here. So you just peel that off and you put that on. And over here, you can do some digital images and it shows you the temperature, all kinds of readouts. And then this right here is your radiator. This is everything that comes with it. So you got everything right here on the table, your two fans, your radiator, you have your hardware, your manual, some thermal paste. And um, that's pretty much it, guys. These Corsair RGB, these are the Vengeance RAM for DDR5 motherboards. And these are pretty cool sticks. They do have the RGB lighting on it. You can set that up through the board. And um, these are going to be the 64 gigabyte kit. We're going to go ahead and open them up. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. See what we got here. See what's in the box. These are the 6200 megahertz version. So there we go. We have two sets. These are the Vengeance RAM. So that's what it looks like on one side. That's what it looks like on the other side. And that's what it looks like on the tops. Nice. Those are some nice RAM sticks. I can't wait to put those in. Four of those side by side with some cool RGB going on. Yeah, that's going to be cool. So you got your box, you got your sticks, and you got your little safety and compliance information. This Corsair is the HX1000i modular power supply. This is actually the Platinum Series, high performance. Hopefully it's pretty good. It does have the new 12 volt adapter for the new video card. So that's also cool. So let's go ahead and take it out and see what we have here. Now I tend to always use a Corsair for my power supply. I don't know why, I mean, but I've had them for a while now and I always seem to use Corsair for my own builds. We do have a 10 year warranty. This is platinum, so it should be really good on power because this computer is gonna be power hungry. We're gonna be using this to power an i9-3900K CPU. So uh, here we go. Let's see what we have in the box. We have safety and compliance guide. We have a box of cables. Here's all of our cables that we need to connect everything. Some wire ties, some screws, power cord, and then we have our power supply or our PSU. All right, so let's take a look at this. Ooh, new PSU smell. Gross. Smells pretty nasty. Ooh, nice. Look at that. That's pretty. Look at that. All those nice connectors, fan right here on the bottom, has some type of light right here with a USB-C port, not really sure what all of that is. And then we have our power right here on the back. And what does this thing say? Silent operation at low to moderate loads. In this mode, fan will not spin. Okay, so good to know. So the fan's not gonna spin if it's in low power mode, if you're not really using that much power. This is a really nice power supply. It's really hefty. Has a little Corsair right here logo. And there is a piece of plastic on it that you probably want to peel off when you're done installing it. And um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. So we have the power supply right here. And then we have the little manual. We have your box of all of your cables. And we have some desiccant so it keeps all of your parts nice and dry. This is the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4070. This is the Gaming Overclock Edition. Now, this is actually going to be replacing this GeForce 2080 Super that we had in the computer before from EVGA. Now, this is going to be paired up with the i9-13900K CPU. So hopefully, we can keep that thing cool. And we can get this thing running through these benchmarks, let you guys see how this GPU does. Anyhow, let's go ahead and take it out of the box and see what we have here. And one thing notable about this particular GPU, that you have a four-year warranty. I don't think most uh, GPUs come with a good warranty like that. So that's really nice to have a good warranty like that, four years. 
All right, so here we are, gigabyte, gigabyte. All right, we have a little, little envelope here. What do we have in here? We have our warranty card. We got to scan this warranty card, get that set up. And then we have a graphics card quick start guide, a warranty card, quick start guide. We have a, or oh, this is actually the cable. This is a 12 volt. These new video cards need a new 12 volt cable that NVIDIA specified. A little bit different than what you guys are used to if you haven't gotten one of these newer cards. So you're gonna just plug in your regular cables right here. These are your eight, two eight pin cable. So it's a 16 pin cable really at the end right here. So that goes straight into the video card and they do sell adapters for that. Some people like to have a 90 degree adapter or you can just kind of have it like bend around kind of like that if you want. Some people don't like that. So you might look into getting a 90 degree adapter, but just do your research before you do that because there are a lot of complaints about wires melting and things like that. Anyhow, this is the GPU right here. It's nice and sealed up. Try to take this thing out without messing it up. All right, let's check this thing out here. Cut the tape. There we go. Ooh, nice. Looks nice. Oh yeah, look at that. It has three fans on it. And what else we got here? It has some nice cooling. This is like um this copper color. Looks like it's copper color. It's hard to tell. There is a lot of copper in here. You can see the cooling pipes in there are actually made out of pure copper, which is really cool. And then on the other side right here, we actually have uh some displays. I don't think this one lights up. I think only this one lights up right here. So it's not a big lit up display like that one right there. It has a bunch of lights, like all of that has lights right there. But you know, you don't really need that. You know, it's not really necessary. It does have a cover on here. You want to pull off the back plate before you install it. You want to just get that cover off of the back plate. And then obviously you also want to pull this off right here so you can actually plug it into your motherboard and then let's see what type of ports we have here we have a uh, one two three display ports and one hdmi so we got one two three display ports and an hdmi port and we got the three fans i believe this is wind force they can see these wind force fans this car looks really nice there it is this is a gigabyte 4070 gaming overclocked edition guys this is 12 gigabytes All right, so here we are. We're ready to start taking apart the system as we have it right now. The first thing that you have to do is you have to obviously take off the side panels. I'm gonna go ahead and take these off carefully. If you have a glass side panel like I do here, you have to be very careful not to break it. So make sure you support it as you're pulling it off. We'll get that out of here. And then we'll get the metal side panel off here on the other side. And this will be step one. Obviously, you got to take the computer out of the room, unplug it, <laughs> unplug it first, you know. All right, let me put these off to the side. All right, so now that we have both side panels off, the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to lay the computer on its back, and we're going to start taking some parts out. Do that nice and carefully without breaking anything, without crimping any wires. And we can go ahead and start with the video card. I want to unplug the adapters, power plugs, as you could call it, and unscrew it. And now it's good to get a screwdriver that has a magnetic tip. So when you're taking out the screws, they're not just falling everywhere and keep your screws. I don't have a little screw dish, a little magnetic dish, so kind of just try to keep it as best as we can here. And in general, most of the new video cards have at least three screws you're gonna be taking out. All right, here we go. And now this is the tricky part right here. You can come around, come take a look. And if you can see inside of here, where's my flashlight right here? So this is the part right here. You see that little clip right there? You gotta get that little clip pushed down in order to take this video card out or else you will break it like a, I got this board used and someone broke this clip right here. So that's what happens if you don't push it down. So you got to basically get around here. You got to push this clip down as best as you can and wiggle the card and then take it out. And there it is, RTX 2080 Super. I put that off to the side there. All right, now we also have a sound card in here. I'll go ahead and pull that out. And we got to take off the uh, cable here, audio cable, and then pull the card out. Here we go. There's a sound card out. All right, next thing we have, we have fans fan headers, motherboard plugs, all sorts of stuff. So it's up to you what you want to take out first if you're doing this, but um, you just kind of like go one piece at a time. Over here, you have your CPU plugs up at the top, your CPU plugs, got your motherboard plug over here. And these are kind of tricky to get out sometimes. You got to push the plug in and kind of wiggle it back and forth in order to get it out. There we go. Got that out. All right, now we have fans. This is fan plug right here, another fan plug. And then we got another fan plug over here. And then we also have some uh, USB plugs over here. So this was actually, this is actually power that goes to the LED controllers for the fans. And this is actually front case USB ports, and this is your USB 3.0 port. So you get all of that out of there, and then you can know what is what. So this was the USB 3, uh, 2 port for the case. This was the fan uh, controller uh, port right here for the, for the uh, LED lights. And there was the USB 3.0 port right there. So last but not least, you have to go over here and take out all of your SATA plugs. If I can get these out. And I've already labeled all of these as far as what they go to. So I can put them back the same way on the new board. 
And these are kind of tricky too. You got to make sure you push down this little button here in order to take them out. All right, so now that we have all the SATA cables out, the next thing we have to do is we have to take off all of the screws that are holding the motherboard in place. We have nine screws. You have one, two right here in the middle, three, and it's just like one, two, three, one, two, three. So you have nine total screws. I'm going to go ahead and take these out so we can pull the motherboard. And these are a different type of screws, if you notice, the way the heads look on those versus the way these screws look. Got to make sure what type of screws you're using. And don't forget your solid state drive because it's really small right there on the board. We're going to get the other board on the table and then we'll pull that drive out and transfer it over. Another thing to keep in mind too is if you don't plan on using the processor, fan, or the RAM, you could just leave them on the board, pull it all out with them attached. Also, be sure to take your time pulling these screws out because you don't want to damage the motherboard just in case you plan on reusing it or selling it or whatever you might want to do with it. All right, so there we go. That's all of the screws. So now the motherboard is just loose. We should just be able to grab it and lift it out. Move the cables out of the way as best as you can here. There we go. There's the motherboard out. Everything on it. That's what it looks like. We got the RAM. We got the fan. We have the CPU. Everything's still in there. We still have our, our NVMe drive still installed. So that's where everything is. Now we're just going to go ahead and use this little box for our screws. This we're going to be using to put the non-bending plate on the CPU. We're going to be installing that first onto the board. Let's take that out and get all of our screws in this little box. So we don't lose them. And now it's probably not a good idea to mix your screws unless you know which is which, which I do. So we can go ahead and mix those. All right. So in here, now this is what the case looks like without your motherboard in it. Take a look. Now these right here, before you install a new motherboard, if you're doing a brand new case, these right here are called standoffs. And you want to have all of your standoffs in. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The same amount of standoffs as you have screws because that's how you screw it in. And this also stops the motherboard from contacting with the chassis so you don't short circuit your board and burn it out. So if you don't install those standoffs and you just try to screw your motherboard directly to the chassis, it's not going to be a good day. All right, let's go ahead and get the other board out. Now that we have the motherboard out, we have all the wires kind of out of the way. We're going to take the power supply out, loosen these screws right here. This is just for my case. It happens to have these screws holding it on like a cover. So depending on how your case is, it's going to be a little bit different. All right, now we're going to take this plate off. And these are the standard screws you would normally be taking out of your power supply right here to get them out. My case just happens to have a plate that you have to install on top of it. So there we go. There is the plate, and here is the power supply. Let's stand this up. So basically, you're going to undo wherever you have them tied up in the back. You're going to pull your power supply out after you get all these cables out. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so we finally got all of these wires disconnected from the power supply, and now we can finally pull it out. Look at this mess. It's like a giant octopus with tentacles. Look at that. Oh, nice. There's an old power supply with a bunch of mess on it. So now that we got the power supply out, we got all these cables dangling everywhere. Just try to tuck them in a little bit because you're going to have to turn the case on its side like this to get the board in. There we go. We're going to have to get the board in here. So first thing we're going to do, move this board out of the way and we're going to get the new board out. And here it is. This is the Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite AX motherboard. That's what we're going to be installing. Go ahead and get whatever we need to get out of this box here and get this one out of the bag. All right, so here it is. There's the board. Very nice. Let's take a look at the back side of it. There's a little plate on it. We're going to be working with that plate because we have to put the CPU on it right now. In order to do that, we're going to be using this piece right here, the non-bending plate, and we're going to get this on here first with the CPU. And this is to keep the processor flat against the board so if it heats up, it doesn't actually get warped or bent. And this is the tool that you're going to be using to put the new plate on. First thing you want to do is loosen that so it doesn't pop off the board, and then just start loosening these. And just take all of these off here. Go ahead and loosen these, take these out. There we go. That just comes off. Set that aside. Keep these little screws because you're going to need those to install it. Get off. These other two screws here. There we go. And just set that to the side. Now keep that just in case you're planning on selling the board or if you need an RMA or something, you want to keep this plate right here. And so now this plate right here, the first thing we got to do is we got to take the CPU out. And this is the top right here where it says Intel. Open it up. Open up the clamshell. And right, here it is. And now this has a little um, arrow right here in the corner. And that arrow has to line up with the board. Here, right here is the arrow on the right hand side, the right hand corner. Yeah, that's a little arrow. So this little arrow right here is going to line up with the right hand side. There's only one way you can put this in because it has these little these little dots on the in here right here. You can see. There you go. 
So it only fits one way. There's an arrow line up here. There's an arrow right here on the board. There's an arrow on the chip. And it only fits in one way. So that's the only way you can actually put it in. So the next thing you want to do is you want to take this plate. You want to put it over just like this. And it should fit perfectly, just like that. And you're going to go ahead and get these in here. Get all of your screws in there like this. And now there's a lot of different ways that people actually tighten this down. What they say is to go ahead and back off on the screw until it clicks and it makes a clicking sound. Let's listen. Clicking sound. And then you want to turn it 90 degrees to the right. And you're going to do the same thing diagonally right here. Clicking sound. You're going to turn it 90 degrees to the right like that. And do the same thing with all of these just to make sure you have them all backed off and correct so you don't want to cross thread them. There we go. 90 degrees to the right. And now, we're going to do is in order to tighten it down, we're going to go diagonally and we're just going to do 90 degree turns until we actually feel force on this until it's actually tight. And then we're going to go one eighth turns to tighten it down the rest of the way. We'll just start right here. Go 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Go over here. 90 degrees. Go over here. Do 90 degrees. I'm going to go all the way around like this the whole time until it's completely tightened down. So that's the way you're going to put this on. All right, so we're done putting the non-bending plate on. As you can see the way that it came out right here. So it's on, it's secure. All of the screws have been tightened. We did a quarter turn and then we did an eighth of a turn in order to get that down and tighten properly. So it's all the way down, it's all the way tight in. As the CPU installation is done, now with that non-bending plate, and we also have the plate on, both of those things are actually done. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take off this panel right here. So we could swap out the NVMe to the new motherboard. Actually, you know what? I think this is the NVMe spot right here. Let's check this out, because I'm not really sure. Since this board doesn't come with a manual, it's hard to know what is what. Really gotta go online to set up everything. And it doesn't include a BIOS manual at all. So there we go. There's an NVMe slot right there. It already has the tape on it as well heat spreading tape okay so we'll use that let's just take this off and take a look at what we got under here we already loosened these screws these are the rest of the drives slots for the nvmes there we go we got the other three nvmes this nvme spot right here actually interferes with one of the sata ports so be sure that you check that before you use this last nvme slot here let's go ahead and get this screw back in here and go make sure that's down there tight but not too crazy tight let's have a thermal pad as well so there's a thermal pad underneath it there's also a thermal pad above it let's go ahead and take this off and see how this will fit make sure you save your little screw for your other board in case you need it pull out your nvme very gently it has all of your stuff on it put it here for a sec and now before we install this drive let's just go ahead and check how it's going to fit and exactly how that works okay so it looks like it's going to go in here like this just like that and this is where it's being held right here by that screw right there okay so let's go ahead and pull this uh tape off this cover off the tape pull this one off there we go. Go ahead and install it. A little bit of force to get it in the spot. It goes right there and it sits right there just like that. There we go. So the drive is actually in there on the thermal pad. And we're going to go ahead and take this off. It has a thermal pad for the top as well, which is pretty cool. And it just goes right over here on top. Slides right in and then screws down with a little bit of force here. Make sure you line it up on the back. There we go. NVMe is installed and it has its own heatsink built into the board. So that is pretty cool right there. I really like that board. So that's the um, D790 Aorus Elite AX. So that is how you install your NVMe drive into the board. We just swapped it out and it has its own heat spreader here. And it also has thermal tape on the bottom and the top. So hopefully that drive runs a lot cooler because that drive was running a little bit hot. The next thing we are going to do here, we need to get this case laid down flat again. We have tucked these wires up in the back here. So you're not crushing anything, get them nice and tucked up there. And we're gonna go ahead and lay this down flat. And now we're gonna go ahead and get the motherboard inside of the case. This is the way that you install this motherboard for the Z790 or Elite AX. The way you install any motherboard pretty much. You have to make sure all your wires are out of the way. You have to make sure that all of your standoffs are exposed so you can be able to put the case on top of it. And you also need to make sure that your back panel from your old motherboard is removed from your case. So we'll just go ahead and get that out of the way right there. Now, some motherboards, they have the back panel additional and some motherboards like this one actually have it built in. So it already has a panel built into it, which makes it convenient so then you don't lose it. All right, so the way you're gonna do this, you're gonna just grab the board. You're gonna slide it into the case. Sometimes it's easier to grab it by this piece right here. And you wanna try not to scratch it or anything while you're getting it in here. Get it into the slot. Check the back panel. So you want to make sure if you come around here to the back panel, see the back panel right here, you want to make sure that the back panel is lined up and it's into the case. So right now it's not fully in. We have to see that you see how right here on the right hand side, right here, it's actually not completely in there. So we have to move the board. You got to be able to adjust the board and get that back panel lined up like that. All right, so we get it in there and we check our standoffs. There we go. Give our standoffs are lining up. 
we can see that they are right here. There we go. We got that one lined up. Got this one lined up. You just got to put them in one at a time and lock in this motherboard in place. So it looks like we've got them lined up pretty well. Now let's go ahead and grab our box right here. Get all of our screws ready. So we're going to do one at a time. Start over here in this upper corner. All right. That one in. And just kind of go across this top part right here. Next corner. And now we go ahead and do the middles. There we go. Make sure they're nice and snug. Don't over tighten them. Now I don't tighten them all the way down in the first go around because um, sometimes the board isn't lined up perfectly and then it won't allow you to get the other ones in. There we go one last one right here. And there we go. Got them all in. All right. So there you have it, guys. This is how you install the motherboard. The motherboard is completely installed. Back panel is lined up. Everything is ready to go for the next step of your computer build. All right, so now that we have the motherboard installed, we have the CPU mounted we have, with the plate and everything on top of it, the next thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be figuring out the power supply and what cables we're actually gonna be using. So obviously the fan has to go down because it's gonna be pulling air up and it's gonna be exhausting it out of the back. So here's the case, so make sure it's gonna fit and it fits in there perfectly. We'll be able to install our bracket just like that. And now we need to figure out what cables we're going to be using for this power supply. Okay, we finally figured out what cables we're going to be using with the power supply. So this is actually a cable that you're supposed to plug in to the back of your power supply here, the USB-C, into a USB port in the computer. And this allows the Corsair IQ to be able to detect the power supply. But we're not actually going to be using Corsair IQ, and we don't actually have an additional USB port to plug this into because they're all full. So we're going to put that aside. We're not going to use that. We have our power cable. We have our motherboard connector cable. We have our graphics card cable right here, 12 volt. We have our CPU cables, and we have our two SATA cables that we're gonna be using. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get everything plugged into the back of the power supply, and then we're gonna go ahead and feed the power supply into the back of the computer and connect it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start getting these cables plugged in. So the first thing we have is the motherboard cable here. This plugs in, in two different spots. You have a uh, right here at the top. It actually says motherboard on the back of the power supply. PCIe, CPU. This is the CPU plug. This is going to be your, um. here's all your SATA plugs right here. SATA, PADA plugs. And then you have your PCIe plug that's going to be able to go for your graphics card right down here. Go ahead and start plugging this stuff in. Pretty much it like that. You just go ahead and plug it in. So we're going to get everything else plugged in and we'll be right back to put this in the case. Okay, so we finally have all the cables connected to the power supply. And now it's the time to go ahead and put the power supply into the case. First thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to just get these cables straight into the case here. And afterwards, we're just gonna have to do some cable management to kind of clean it up a bit. This is the messiest part right here is the cables for the case thing. Now you could put it in first and then plug the cables in after, but then you're not gonna be able to see what you're plugging in. So I like to just do it this way, even though it's a little bit tougher to get all the cables through at once, but it just works out better for me at least. All right, and there we go. That's pretty much it. The power supply is in the case. You kind of see the back of it over here if you wanna come around. Here's all the nice cables sticking out. Okay, so here's the clip right here, and this clip has to clip in here. You're gonna pull this through the hole, you're gonna bend it around like that, and you're gonna clip it in. There we go. That's in there. The motherboard plug. Okay, I wanted to show you guys the way that you do the CPU cables because this can be a little bit tricky. You got to get the cables, pull them through. Clip needs to be on this side facing you. You flip them upside down like this, bend the cable, and then you got to get it right there in the slot. And then it plugs in just like that. There we go. One, and same thing for the other one. You get it, you bring it through, you bend it over, make sure that it's a clip. See this little clip right here? Clip right here has to be facing you. Bend it over, get it right there in the slot. Like that. And that's it. There's your CPU cables. A little bit tricky. All right, there you go. So you got the motherboard cable, CPU cables. And now the next couple of cables we have, we actually plugged in this for a front panel cable right here. It's just a front panel for the motherboard. It has like a little clip. You plug in your cables into it. It just clip them in really easily. I'll show it to you real quick. Here's the cable. And here's your cable. You just stick them in here. So like, for example, the power cable, make sure the plus is on the right side. You just shove the cable in there and it just clips into place. Really easy. You just take this, bring it through, flip it around, plug it in just like that. And there's your front panel cables right there. That's for your reset button, your power switch and such. We have our SATA cables plugged in right here. Just bring them around and plug them in. I have labeled mine, so I know exactly which way that they were before. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and plug in the USBs and the fans. Okay, here's one of the USBs. And the way that you plug these in too as you see on the upper right hand corner it's missing a pin so make sure that's an upper oh sorry upper left hand corner that's the way you want to plug it in here's the other usb you can see right here upper left hand corner is missing a pin that's the way you want to plug it in this one's for the front panel usbs and now here are the fans this is the fan in the back of the case and it doesn't really matter which way you plug the fans in so much it just matters that um you know once you get inside of your software you can just control it from there whatever software you're going to be using so you just plug in all the fans and these can only go in one way because it has like a little 
little piece right here it only plugs in one way towards the bottom these two little things right here going towards the bottom we have our fans right there plugged in this is the back fan the two top fans and then for these front fans we're going to actually be plugging those into the water cooler because we're going to be swapping those out for the ones that come with the cooler so we'll get to that in a bit next thing we're going to do real quick we're just going to just go ahead and throw in the audio adapter right here there's a sound card. Now let's go ahead and put this in here. And plugging in a sound card is really easy. It is a sound blaster. Just find your port, take the piece out, and just go ahead and plug it in just like this. And that's it. It's plugged in. And so all we need to do is just put the screw in and we're done. We're going to hook up the HD audio cable right here. And that's just going to go in just like this with the words up. This is if you're using an additional sound card. If you're not, you don't worry about that. Actually, we'll plug in down there on the motherboard. All right. So that is pretty much it. Let's go ahead and grab our our screw right here to screw this down and it's going to go in right here and that's it got our card in we got our hd audio cable connected next thing we're going to be doing here we actually plugged in our this is our usb-c right here because we have a usb-c on the front panel this is the cable for it. we just plugged it right here into the usb-c on the board and we're going to go ahead and grab our usb 3.2 and it's to come around and plug into right here so we're going to route it right here to this hole you can see it has like a little notch right here in the front you have to make sure that notch goes into that port right there there's the notch and i'll flip this thing around like this and plug it in to this port right here with the notch going into the port right here just like this there we go. There's USB 3.2 plugged in. So that is pretty much it for the cables on the board. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to get the uh, cooler and we're going to mount the radiator right here. We're going to connect it to these fans in the front and then we're going to go ahead and paste and mount it to the processor. Before I forget, I do actually have to tie this down. This is the power supply. Just going to get straightened out here and then we're just going to have to put the plate on it. It bolts in just like that. So we're going to bolt it in just like this and we're going to put the plate on it. And that's pretty much how you mount the power supply into the chassis. So now it's time for the installation of the Oris Water Force X280 cooler. Okay, now that we have all the parts that we need for the LGA 1700 board, we're going to go ahead and start off right here with the back plate. Actually, let me show you something real quick first. This piece right here, show you real quick. This piece goes on, it goes on like this. So you're going to get it kind of like where you want it, and then you push it in, and then you turn it. So this is where I want it. I want it right between these two uh, hoses right there. So that's all you need to do for that piece right there. Once you decide how you're going to be mounting it on the board, it does take a little bit of planning. So take your time, make sure you get it right. This is the back plate right here for the Intel board. And then we also have these screws right here that we're going to use to screw this in for these and make sure that you're using the right stuff i mean it says it on the bag exactly what it is lga 1700 it tells you exactly what everything is so just make sure you take your time get your right parts and then you can get everything set up right we're going to go ahead and get this back plate on here and for the lga 1700 you're going to pull it all the way out so it's going to be all the way out like this so it is able to fit so just go ahead and get one screw at a time here get the back plate over here on the back kind of just goes on the back through the little holes and you come around the front you can see where it pops out it's going to be popping out right here now those holes, can you see it right there? It's sticking out right here, right there. There it is. We're going to go ahead and get these screws in here. And screw this in there. And it feels like it's kind of like not fitting right, but basically just bends. It's just a piece of like a plastic material. I don't really know what it is. And it kind of just bends around the back plate of the CPU. So let's get these all on here. This side's a little bit tougher to get in because of the spacing. The last one in up here. Be careful because there's a bunch of resistors all around here. A bunch of not resistors, a bunch of capacitors, I should say. You want to try not to break them. All right, we've got the back plate on. Back plate is secure. Once you have the back plate on, you're actually going to come around here and you're going to figure out where you're going to be mounting your cooler. So for me, the way that I'm going to mount it, I have to mount it right here in front. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do and then I'm going to do it and then I'll come back and show you how it comes out. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to put it in here like this. We're going to mount it to the fans. We're going to be using the MF140 halos and it's going to go just like this onto the motherboard. Okay guys, so we just got the cooler in. As you can see, come take a look over here. Here it is. It's actually mounted on the CPU already. It's not, it hasn't been pasted yet. It's just on there just for aesthetics, just to see where it's going to be and to get these cables to, to start bending here. And then we have the radiator right here. Here, as you can see on the side I mounted the radiator in here so the only way to get these in here since there is a metal bracket in between was to actually use the screws hold the fan up and then go straight into the radiator it was a little bit tough to do but as you can see it came out really nice the radiator almost looks like it already belonged there and um, hopefully it doesn't heat my hard drives at all what we're gonna do right now we're actually gonna lay the case down and we are going to get this CPU pasted all right so let's go ahead and get this case laid down let's get our parts right here that we need as yes, we got our spatulas we got our paste okay so here we go let's get that cable out of the way so these screws right here they're all just thumb tightened supposedly you're not supposed to tighten them with anything you're supposed to thumb tighten them which is a little bit tricky because of the space there's really not a lot of space in there i'm gonna go ahead and take all of these off and try to get a nice even coat of 
CPU paste on here. Okay, so while we take this off, let's just put something down so we don't mess up the board. All right now, we're just gonna go ahead and pull this off nice and straight. Use this piece of plastic over here just to rest it for a second. Okay, we just move those cables over to the side like that for right now. Here is the processor. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the Arctic MX6 processor paste right here. I'm gonna open this bad boy up and hopefully this is good. And there it is right there, Arctic MX6 paste. MX6, a little cover right here you're gonna take off. You can see the paste right inside of there. And we're gonna go ahead and grab a spatula. Now, this is the first time I've ever applied paste like this. I'm just gonna cover top of the CPU. My plan is to get some paste on here and I'm just gonna kind of go like this, kind of just evenly spread it as best as I can and go around and try not to make a mess. All right, so we got a piece of paper towel here just in case we make a mess. It's gonna be very important. And we're gonna go ahead and take this top off right here. Just take it off just like that. And there we go. And now we can go ahead and try to spread some paste on here and see how we're going to do this and uh, nothing seems to be coming out okay here we go let's do it on the paper towel to get it going okay there we go it's coming out now a little bit across here like that all right let's see how that spreads oh that's thick there's almost a consistency of like chewing gum it makes it pretty easy to spread i guess and we definitely need some more Ooh, man, that's sticky. Sticky and tricky. This is kind of easier to go sideways, really. I really just want to try to get it as even as I can. It's much easier to just put a dot and just squish it down, honestly, but I didn't want to do that. There's a lot of high spots on this. It's not coming out perfect like I would want it to be. Is that going to matter? I don't know. From the videos that I saw, it didn't really seem to matter what they did. We squeeze it down with the CPU. I think this is probably going to just, uh, it should flatten it out all pretty well. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> about that job? It looks pretty bad. Looking pretty bad there, guys. Okay, guys, one important step we missed is we forgot to peel the sticker off the bottom of this piece right here. We didn't peel it off and we stuck it down with that on there. Good news is that we got really good coverage. So it covered completely, it looked great. Bad news is that we had to take it off and do it again. The thing is pasted, it looks good down there. The only thing I noticed here is this is really, really sticky. So we have an alcohol wipe and we're gonna try to wipe this thing off. Now, normally I wouldn't have figured that would be so sticky, but it is. It's completely covered with the glue from the um, sticker. It has a lot of bumps in it too. It doesn't, it doesn't seem uniform. Like normally this would be very, very smooth. This is very, very bumpy. Hopefully that doesn't really matter. These bumps, they should all get filled in with the um, CPU paste. But take a look at this thing. It's really bumpy. I don't know if that's right or not. It's really sticky too. All right, so we've cleaned this up about as good as we could get it. There are a lot of imperfections on it, which I really didn't expect. So, you know, Horus, you know, you guys need to like step up your game a little bit. And there's also a lot of stickiness on it still. I even used stronger alcohol. We used this 91% alcohol and it still didn't completely take it off. So we're just going to work with it the way that it is. The paste seems to be smooth enough and we're going to go ahead and just mount it and then start tightening it. Let's get it down here evenly as we can on all of them right there okay let's go ahead and let's start over here putting these screws in these thumb screws i'm gonna start in this upper top corner cable out of the way this cable is very hard to work with all right so upper top corner right there and we'll come down over here go diagonally just until it's a little bit tight to turn grab the other two now we're just going to tighten them all diagonally and until we get them all seated and supposedly these just need to tighten them down with your fingers and not use any tool. All right, so they basically, they just tighten until they can't tighten anymore. You kind of feel a very hard stop on them. I guess that back plate kind of makes it so they can't really over tighten. And I think that's about it. I think that's about all we could tighten. This one back here is a little bit tricky, but I think they're all about as tight as they're going to get. And that CPU paste should be good. Hopefully it's not spitting out all over the place. So there you have it. That's finally mounted. Okay, so the CPU is pasted. Everything is installed. Now in the back here, we just connected a SATA cable for power. And then the only other thing to do right here is we have to plug in this USB cable right underneath here. Before we forget, let's go ahead and take this off right here. Mm, nice, there we go. Let's go ahead and just take that card out. My sound card, there we go. Now we can easily access the cable and then get this one plugged in right here. There we go, USB 2.0 cable is plugged in and we'll go ahead and reinsert our sound card right here get it screwed back down. Got both of our USB cables plugged in. We have our sound card back in. So that is it for the Waterforce X280 installation. The processor is pasted. It's installed. It's tightened down with the thumb screws. And um, we've already connected the SATA cable and USB 2.0 cable as well. And the other thing to mention with the Waterforce X280 is you do have to connect the fans. So we connected the two front fans to the Waterforce. Okay, so now we're about to install the Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 RAM. 
and we're going to install it right here. We have four available slots, and so it doesn't really matter where you place it because we're installing all four of the modules. Go ahead and just take it out of the package. And there we go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and grab these out here. And now there's a certain way that they go because of where this is and the shape of these. I believe on one end, it's a little bit smaller than the other. Okay, so we'll open all of these up right here. We're going to open all of these up on both sides and get the RAM situated here. Let's make sure that it's plugged in right. And uh, it looks like that is not the right orientation. So we flip it around. It's like they're all going to be going this way with the Vengeance logo inside. Here we go. We can see that that's lining up right here. You want to make sure that it's lining up before you try pushing them down or else you'll break your RAM. You know, before I even do that, this board should be probably dusted. Before installing these RAM modules, I want to go ahead and just dust out the slots here. Just in case. This is a camera lens duster. This thing is pretty cool. I really like this one. I'll put a link in the description to everything that I'm using here. Here we go. Dust that out. Go ahead and get the module in. Line it up properly here and here. There we go. Now we can push it in. Here we go on this side. There we go. Snapped into place. Grab the next one. I'm going to install it the same way, same orientation. The Vengeance logo in. Get it lined up. Then we're going to snap one side in. Snap the other side in. There we go. Both in there. All right. Open up the next pack. Do the same thing. There we go. Vengeance logo in. Line it up. Snap one side in. Snap the other side in. I know it's kind of a little, makes you a little nervous the first time you ever snap in a RAM module. You just don't know how much pressure to put on it. So you just get it up there. You make sure it's lined up and then just snap one side in. Snap the other side in. There we go. You can hear the snaps and those look beautiful installed in there. So that's it. That's pretty much all it takes to install the Vengeance RGB Pro RAM. And I don't know what you do with these. You can store some eggs in them, some really little tiny eggs. So that's it. Vengeance RGB Pro RAM, guys. That's all you need to do to install it. Okay, guys, this is the final step here. This is how you install the Gigabyte 4070 Overclock Gaming or Gaming Overclock GPU. And this is the final step of the build, obviously, besides powering it on and setting up the BIOS and doing all of that good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and get this out of the box. Before we do that, let's go ahead and take this little duster here. And let's dust out the slot to make sure there's nothing in it. Nice and dust free. Oh, look, there's still something on top of there. All right. So we'll do that and now we'll go ahead and take this out of the box and get ready to install it. Ooh, Gigabyte. Here it is, guys. It's not a bag of chips, relax. Thinks everything is a bag of chips. All right, so now the first thing you're gonna do when you install this, you have to take this piece off right here, this little plastic piece, take that off. It's just like covering PCI slot. A lot of video cards will also have this on the back. So go ahead and remove that, get that out of the way. Make sure we don't have any other stickers, any other plastic anywhere. Okay, we look sticker and plastic free. So now you wanna take this thing, you wanna line it up with the slots. Oh, hold on one second. We need to cover one slot here. Before we do that, let's make sure we have our slot covered. We have one additional slot that doesn't need to be exposed. So I guess this Gigabyte only uses two slots. It really kind of takes up the space for three slots, but only two slots actually need to be uncovered. So there we have that covered up. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the card and we're gonna go ahead and line it up with the slots right here and line it up with the PCI slot. Get it in here, you can see everything is getting lined up. Look at that, just barely fits. Go ahead and get it in and just pop it in. There we go, nicely in there. Now we get our screws. We're gonna just tighten it up in there. There we have it, guys. Video card installed. Check and make sure these are all tight. Make sure these ones are tight. So it's not bumping around. So the video card is installed. There we go. The graphics card is installed. And last but not least, we have the brand new 12 volt cable right here. And let's see how we're going to bring this. So all you got to do is you have to get it routed wherever you want it to be. And just bring it up like this and snap it into place. So in our situation here, in our case, we're actually bringing it from the bottom up, snapping it into place there, and then we'll cable manage it over here. It looks pretty good, I guess. It's not really in the way. And in the back here, we'll just kind of move the cable inside the box. <clears throat> Got a lot of cables back here. I'm gonna move a cable inside the box here as best as we can, get it out of the way. That's it for installing a Gigabyte Gaming Overclock 4070 GPU, guys. All it takes, very easy. Oh, hey guys, just cleaning off the front panel here so it looks nice and clean when we put this thing back together. So we got the build done, as you can see. Everything is in. Come and take a look. Ooh, there we go. We got our graphics card in. We got our CPU in. 
take a look over here and that is the cable mess so this is one new component that we had to put in right here this is a usb splitter and i'll put the link in the description for all of this stuff in case you guys need it that's actually a Corsair USB splitter, and we have the Cooler Master. This is the RGB light controller. So we're going to see how everything works. We're going to go ahead and put this case, button up this case right now. We finish just wiping down this front panel here a little bit. Get off all these fingerprints. There we go. All right, that should do. All right, let's go ahead and put the back panel on first. Make sure this thing fits. Let's go ahead and just flop this thing down. Get this back panel here. It's much easier to do it if it's flat, to be able to get this on because this is kind of bulky on this side. Wires were sticking out a little bit, but it's not bad. We'll go ahead and just bolt it in right here. If you guys are wondering, this is the Rosewill Mirage P700 case. I don't know if you can get this anymore. And the reason we have this particular case is because we are using a Blu-ray drive, Blu-ray drive slash burner, and we wanted a place to be able to install that. Okay, so here we go. Go ahead and lift this up. This is very heavy now. Okay, here we go. So as you can see right over here in the front, let me just go ahead and show you. This is the front of the case right now, the way that it looks. We have the LG Blu-ray drive, and we have our Cooler Master fans in there attached to the radiator. Those are attached to the X280 radiator. All right, so there we go. Go ahead and get the glass side panel on now. Tip it the other way. Make sure everything's looking good. We want no dust on our new little display here. And we're probably going to have to take this cover off when we turn it on, but I wanted to show you what this looks like completely covered. We're going to have to turn that display. I don't know which way it goes, which way it is right now. All right, so this is the completed build, guys. I'm going to lift this up. Oh, man, it's so heavy. There you go. There is a completed build. That's what it looks like. All right, well, that's about it for this video right now as far as the build goes. Next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be plugging it in, turning it on. We have to set up the BIOS to make sure that this, oh, I forgot. The processor that we're using here is the Intel 13900, i9-13900K. And um, we want to make sure that that's not going to run too hot. So we do have to go into the BIOS. We have to set a couple of parameters in there because it seems like um, the processors, they want to go over the power limit. And the motherboard actually jumps it even over and above that. So it just makes it run really, really hot. And we don't want that to happen. So we're going to go ahead and get that in the room, get it set up, and then we'll be back when we're in the BIOS. Okay, guys, here we go. We have the computer connected over here and ready to be powered on for the first time. So we're going to go ahead and press the button. Here we go. Ooh, it's spinning Gigabyte. Oh, man, look at those RAM sticks going. Awesome, awesome. Look, look, everything is on. Okay, we gotta turn that because it's kind of upside down and sideways. Video car looks really interesting like that. And hopefully this thing boots up here. Okay, guys, so here we are. We're in the BIOS. You can go ahead and take a look here. We got the BIOS up finally. We're gonna have to make some configuration settings here. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna configure all of the settings. And once we're configured and once we're booting, we're gonna be back because everybody has different settings for their different um, computers because obviously we have all different components. But the computer is booting up. We're actually in BIOS right now. We're going to set this up. And we're going to be right back. And then we'll go over the settings I did and we'll show you how we boot into Windows. Okay, guys. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that since the video card wasn't set up yet, we actually had to plug the monitor into the onboard video to actually get a display at all. So I don't know how you guys would do that if you only have a video card and you have no onboard video on your graphics. So I'm not really sure how that would work for you. Anyhow, these are the settings that we went and we configured. So we did enhanced multi-core performance. We went from auto to disabled. We did turbo power limits. We went enabled. We did um, the PL1 uh, package to 125 and the PL2 to 253 because those are the manufacturer specifications. We did extreme memory profile. We went to XMP1 so we can get the full speed of our RAM. And we did the CPU over temperature protection. And we went to 80 degrees. Now, I, nobody ever really talks about that. And nobody re ever really does all of these together. Um, so we did it. We're going to see what happens and how this works out. And the one thing that we did not do is we didn't undervolt it. A lot of people say that you should undervolt it because it's, uh, you know, using too much voltage and getting too hot right now, as you can see right here, it's 35 degrees. It's not running anything it's just in the BIOS. So that's where we're at right now. We're going to go ahead and say save configuration. Hopefully we can boot into windows and then we can install the uh, drivers for the graphics card. So here we go. 
Okay guys, here we go. It's finally booting up here. We're getting into Windows. We'll be able to install the drivers for the video card. So it just takes some time. Once we set up the settings in the BIOS, it did take some time in order for it to actually start coming up into Windows. Getting devices ready. So right now what it's doing, because we didn't actually reinstall Windows here. We just used the old installation of Windows we had on the previous build. And so right now Windows is actually going through, checking everything, and it's getting all the new drivers. Okay, here we go. We have a display. I'm gonna go ahead and load in. See what kind of temp we have on the CPU right now. Well, it doesn't tell us, it just tells the frequency. All right, GT compatible display connect. Okay, we have both displays on right now, so that's really cool. It actually asked us to install Gigabyte Control Center, and that's pretty much all we need because we have all Gigabyte components. So the board is Gigabyte, the graphics card is Gigabyte, and actually the cooler is also Gigabyte. Everything's Gigabyte. So this is going to install Gigabyte Control Center. I don't know why this is set up as the primary monitor. We got to fix that up once we do the graphics card. All right, so it wants to install it. Before we do that, um, let me just check our graphics and see what we got going on here with the monitors. Okay, so now before we swap monitors, we have to go ahead and drag this stuff over to here. It needs to be in order for us to be able to see it. Let's open up this uh, display settings. Let's drag this over here. There we go. Okay, now we can go ahead and plug this monitor back into the graphics card. And now we should be able to see it and control it. There we go. We are ready to install Gigabyte Control Center. Let's go next. I agree. And wow, that was fast. And now this supposedly will download all the drivers that we need. There it is. Go ahead and open it up. All right, so we're going to the update center and we're going to see what drivers we have. Okay, let's go ahead and skip the tutorial. So here's all the drivers. Let's go ahead and just check it again. A right, list of updates. Click install to begin. Okay, here we go. We'll uncheck Norton. A okay, Gigabyte Control Center is an update. RGB Fusion, Gigabyte Storage Library. I'm not really sure what any of this is. Let's see details. So we're going to have to go through all of these and figure out what we need and what we don't. And then we'll install. We'll get uh, onto the install. We'll be back in just a moment. We're just installing all the software that we need here. Now, while that's going, one thing I do want to show you real quick that we figured out is that that third monitor was really getting in the way. So basically, if you want to get that out of the way, you just click on it. You go over here and you choose disconnect this display and it actually takes it out. So then your stuff pops up on the right monitors. So that's a ghost monitor. That's for the onboard video. And if you're not using it, then you can just get rid of it. If you do have another monitor, you're connecting to that. Then obviously you want to leave that alone. So we're going to let this all install. And then once it's done, we're going to reboot and then we'll be back. But this is pretty much the setup. We pretty much showed you guys everything is all working so far. The only thing we haven't showed you yet is the fan colors and setting up the RGB. So that's one thing we're going to be doing uh, once this finishes installing. We'll be back to show you the completed computer with all the RGBs and everything fully working. Just a bit. Okay, guys, we just got finished with the build completely. It's uh, up and running. Uh, one problem we were having is once we installed the, um, the control center software, where is it? Right over here. You have to have this. You have to have Gigabyte Control Center software on here. And basically, once you install that, it's going to set everything up for you. The one thing that, it, that didn't work was the firmware update for the water cooler. And the way that we got the firmware update for the water cooler to work is all we had to do was just install a micro SD card formatted FAT32 into the side of the cooler. And then all of a sudden we're able to do the firmware update, but they don't tell you that. So it took a while to figure it out. So anyhow, we got that set up. We have all the bio settings set up as I was telling you guys earlier. And that seemed to make everything run cool. The CPU is not running hot at all, but we did also limit the CPU temperature max to only 80 degrees. So that's something you might want to do. So just so I could go over the stuff that we changed in the BIOS. Uh, let's see here. We actually did, um, we turned off enhanced multi-core performance. We disabled that. We also did, um, uh, let's see, we did not, we did not undervolt it. We didn't undervolt it. That's one thing we left alone. We did PL1 to 125, PL2 to 253. That's for the um, turbo power limits. We also enabled XMP to get our RAM frequency because we have 6,200 megahertz RAM. And then we did um, CPU over temp protection and we set that at only 80 degrees. So basically the CPU core cannot go over 80 degrees. The other thing I want to mention too, back to the water cooler, is that the water cooler, the pump speed and the fan speed were showing zero. It wouldn't work at all until we did the firmware. And now that we have the firmware update, if you go inside of here, go to fan control, you go to here and you can actually see you have pump speed 
and everything working. Before, this was just showing zero. So now that's all working after the firmware update. We went to one, we were at 1.3, went up to 1.9. That's on the um, Waterforce X280 cooler. You will actually have to get the firmware update installed. So guys, you want your fan and your, um, your pump to be able to be managed and to be actually able to work properly. Okay, guys, so for the Oris Water Force X280, the install was successful. It went in fairly easy, except one thing I didn't realize is that it did need a 2.0 header, a USB 2.0 header, which I didn't have available. So I actually had to get a header splitter that I purchased from Corsair, and I will put the link in the description for that if you're interested in it. And once I got that, I actually plugged the Water Force into the header on the motherboard. I used a splitter to split the other headers from my front panel. And for some other components like my LED lighting controller that I'm using. Um, so that was pretty much the only tricky thing about that. Also, as far as like positioning it, screwing in the fans was a little bit tricky because there was a panel in between the fans and the cooler. So you kind of had to hold it in place and screw everything together. And then last but not least, after I did the um, Gigabyte Control Center, because you definitely need the Gigabyte Control Center if you have Gigabyte products. And that's where you're going to get all your drivers from. But in a Gigabyte Control Center, it did not want to install the firmware update for the, um, the water cooler. And without the firmware update, I couldn't see my fan RPM or my pump RPM. It was just stuck at zero. It wouldn't work. So I had to go from uh, firmware 1.3 to 1.9. The only way I got it to work is I actually had to install a micro SD card. It has to be less than 32 gigabytes. It has to be formatted FAT32. It needs to be inserted into the pump head. And um, there's like a little slot right there for a micro SD card. Once I put that in, rebooted the computer, I had to wait a few minutes for it to actually show up. I say probably it took me like maybe like three to five minutes before the SD card even showed up that it was inside of it. And then um, I was actually able to update the firmware. Once the firmware was updated, um, you're going to have to actually shut off the computer, completely shut down. Then when you turn it back on, it's the firmware update is going to be happening on the screen, uh, on the display right here on the pump. And then once that's done, it's going to say that it's finished and you need to turn off the computer again completely and then turn it back on again. And then it is done. And once that's done, you come inside, your fan speed and your pump RPMs are going to be manageable from right here inside of the Gigabyte Control Center. So that's the one that those are the several different things that I had as far as the um, the uh, X280 Water Force cooler. I do actually like the Water Force cooler. I think it works really well. I also like the screen on it. It's pretty cool. So I recommend it. I have it on that computer. I also have it on this computer as well. So I have it on two different computers at this moment. So for the Thermalright CPU plate uh, for the even uh, force distribution, uh, they call it the anti-bending buckle or anti-bending bracket. Um, I really like it. I like the way that it held the processor down firmly. It was a little bit tricky to get it on there because you kind of had to back up the screws and put them in and try to get them to all be even. It made me really nervous that they weren't even. So I did it like, I don't know, like 50 times before I probably got it the way that I felt comfortable with it. But it did actually make it really easy to be able to spread the thermal paste on there. So it didn't get all around the CPU or anything. And then um, I, I really think it worked. I mean, my temperatures are really good. I think right now, my temps right now are like in the 40s when it's just pretty much at idle. And this is for a 13900K processor, i9-13900K that really, really runs hot. So I think it's doing really well right now. Temps are looking good. And um, it just made, I think, the process of thermal pasting it and setting everything up really easy. So I definitely recommend the Thermalrite um, anti-bending buckle for your processor, for your especially 13 series. Okay, so for the Arctic MX6 processor paste or CPU thermal paste, I think it was good. It was a lot thicker than I thought it was going to be. It was almost like chewing gum thickness. Also, it actually stuck to the spatula so much that it was impossible to get it off. But I think because it was thick, it let it be able to spread evenly and a little bit easier. And um, I was overall pleased with it. And my temperatures of my CPU are running in the idles anywhere between 35 and 40 or so degrees. You can take a look right here on the side. And I think that's partially because of that Arctic MX6 thermal paste. So I'm really um, I'm glad that I picked that particular one for my build. So the Gigabyte Aorus Z790 Elite AX motherboard. I was overall happy with the motherboard. I really liked the slots for the M2 drives, especially for the primary M2 drive. It already had a heat spreader on it. It already had a thermal tape on it. So I think that's going to help my temperature for my um, NVMe, especially since I have one of the Samsung 970 Evos, uh, two terabytes, because those tend to run hot. 
So I'm glad that I have that on the motherboard right off the bat. I didn't have to try to like cut any thermal pads and put it on there like I had to do in other cases. And it just made it a lot simpler. And you also do have another uh, two to three slots, depending on which uh, SATA ports you're going to be using. And um, the one thing I really wish the board did have was a digital display because it wasn't that cheap. It was like $250. I really wish that it did have a digital display on it so you can see if there was anything going on with it. Because when I first booted up the computer, uh, the computer wasn't coming on, like nothing was happening and I couldn't figure out what it was. And basically what I found out is that it wasn't booting to the primary video card because I didn't have the drivers yet. So I had to plug it into onboard video. And then I was able to get into the BIOS and I was able to configure everything. And the BIOS on this board is really good. It had all of the features that I was looking for for my 13900K. It, as far as uh, the lighting, because I know on some of the motherboards, the older motherboards, when you shut the computer off, the LEDs would stay lit. But it's already set up in the BIOS for them not to stay lit. They turn off and it's also set up for Intel virtualization technology. So, so if you're not going to be using anything like VMware or anything like that, you can go into the BIOS. You could just go ahead and disable that um, if you're not going to use it. But Besides that, everything else was pretty standard and it worked well. Really happy overall with the motherboard and with the performance. So for this motherboard, the Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite AX, I definitely recommend it if you're not trying to spend five or 600 bucks for a motherboard. And um, it worked well for me and it'll probably work well for you also. For the Corsair HX1000i uh, power supply, it is actually a modular power supply. For me, it worked very well. The only thing that I had that was kind of a problem with it was that it didn't have enough SATA cables. It actually has a spot where you can plug in, I think, four different SATA, SATA or PATA cables, but it actually only comes with two SATA cables and I needed three. So I did have to buy, um, I have to buy some extensions in order to be able to connect everything else that I needed to the SATA cables. Besides that, I really like it. It runs really quiet. It's powering my 4700 um, RTX 4700 video card my 13900K CPU, my motherboard, my bunch of fans that I have in here, my MF140 Halos that I'm running inside this case and everything else, and even my Water Force X280 cooler. So the power supply seems like it is plenty enough for everything that I'm doing here. And I definitely recommend it guys. Really easy install, the modular design is great and the video cable is flexible enough to be able to plug into your car with the 12 volts and without a problem like I've seen on some of the other power supplies and people complaining about them online. For the Aorus uh, Water Force X280, one thing I did want to mention is that you're supposed to connect the fans. Now I'm using MF140 Halos from a Cooler Master on there. I'm not actually using the Gigabyte fans, but um, you're supposed to connect these fans to the RGB header that comes with the pump. But when I did that, I wasn't able to control it through Signal RGB software, which is what I use to control all of the LEDs in my case. So in order to control it through Signal RGB, I just connected it to the normal LED controller where I have my other fans connected and I'm not having a problem within the um, Aorus, within the Gigabyte software at all. It seems to be just fine. And I did just want to mention that to you guys. All right, guys, so for the i9-13900K processor, I was really nervous about getting this processor and putting it in my build because a lot of people are having problems with this processor running really, really hot, breaking the 100, you know, 100 degree Celsius limit and, um, you know, throttling or overheating or bending or whatever, you know, the complaints are online about it. But I was really glad that I have it, that I purchased it and um, that I did enough research to figure out what I needed to set on it to make it work. So let me just tell you guys what I did. This is actually on a Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite AX motherboard. So if you have a Gigabyte board, this will apply to you. If you have a different manufacturer, you're going to probably have to look up, you know, whatever the um, settings are for your board. But for my board, for my Gigabyte board, what I did I disabled enhanced multi-core performance. I disabled that. I um, actually, I did not undervolt it. Like a lot of people were talking about undervolting it. I left the voltage just the way that it was. I did change the turbo power limits. I enabled that. I limited PL1 to 125. I limited PL2 to 253. I enabled XMP for my RAM so I can get the full potential out of my RAM, 6,200 megahertz. And then last but not least, I did something I didn't hear anybody else talking about. I did CPU over temp protection and I set that to only 80 degrees. So right now it has not been able to go over 80 degrees because it's controlled by the motherboard not to allow that to happen. So through the BIOS, that is just really, really nice. And this CPU right now is running anywhere between uh, high 30s, mid to high 30s up to it actually hit 80 or right around 80. 
But in gaming like Minecraft, I think it was running in the 60s, low 60s, um, high 50s to low 60s. And then we did play Scrap Mechanic, which is a little bit tougher on uh, you know, your CPU and temperatures. And I think on Scrap Mechanic, it did hit the 80 limit, but it stayed right around in the 70s. So it's running really well. It's definitely not going to overheat. And um, I have it with the um, Water Force X280 from um, Oris, the Oris Water Force X280. And I think those two paired together, along with the anti-bending buckle from Thermalright, actually are really helping this out. And I'm also using the um, Arctic MX6 thermal paste on this as well. So I'm glad I got the 13900K. I think it's going to work well for me. If anything strange happens, I will definitely be sure to let you guys know. But as of right now, it works really well. The processor is fast. I got really good benchmark scores, and I will include them in a review. You'll see them on the screen. And um, they are a lot better than they were before. Um, you know, I only did have an i7 6700K before, but um, the benchmarks are way better. It's running great. It's running cool. And it's running stable, which is the most important. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's that's the end of this build. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell button so you never miss another video on Real Reviews. See you guys next time.